Hi everyone and welcome to the eighth lesson in our Macbeth GCSE revision series. If you haven't seen this channel before, what we're doing is really getting close to the GCSEs this year now, but we're looking at all of the characters, the themes, the context, the major quotes that you need for different characters and themes, model answers, paragraphing, all that good stuff that you need to be successful in your GCSEs. Whether you're doing them in literally a couple of weeks now, it's getting a bit nerve wracking, or if you're doing them next year or the year after that, welcome. Hopefully there'll be some useful stuff in here for you. So over the last seven weeks, we've gone through the characters of Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, Macduff, the witches, Malcolm. We've also gone through the themes good of good versus evil and ambition. If you haven't checked any of those out and you're sitting Macbeth, I highly recommend you obviously go back and watch some of those. If you're sitting any of the other Obviously, you're seeing some of the other uh, books as well, like Inspector Calls and um, uh, looking at different uh, uh, different parts of the course, maybe like uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Christmas Carol, Lord of the Flies, all that good stuff. I've got videos on all of that as well, so feel free to check that out. I've got videos on poetry, check that out. And I've got some language videos as well, English language videos. So feel free to check all of that out. Hopefully, some of it will help you. Today's lesson, we're going to go through violence in Macbeth the theme of violence. And um, as usual, what we'll do is we will sort of go through what violence is, um, or where it shows itself and that sort of thing, just thinking about violence generally in the play. Then we're gonna go through some of the key quotes of violence together, and then we'll finish with a model paragraph on violence. Oh, that was last week going through Malcolm. Anyway, so violence in Macbeth is what we would call both overt. Mm, how big or small should I make myself today? I think I'll keep myself sort of fairly decent size. That'll do. Yeah. So you know what? I'm going to go here today. I'm going to be on the on the arm. No, that's stupid. Let me just stay up here. I don't know. If you have any preference on that, feel free to comment down below. I don't know uh, where the best place is to put my camera. But anyway. So it's both overt and it's subtle. So what that means is that there's aggressive, over-the-top, clear violence at certain points. So you've got characters literally stabbing each other and obviously Macbeth literally cuts off, sorry, Macduff literally cuts off Macbeth's head and Macbeth cuts other characters in half. There's a lot of that. But there's also more subtle violence. A lot of the violence is done in the shadows, right? So Macbeth doesn't overtly kill Duncan. He doesn't do it in daylight. He does it in the cover of darkness. He doesn't kill Banquo in daylight. He covers up the deed with darkness. Yeah. And there's other subtle violence as well. You get the sense that there is this violence generally between a lot of the characters that they just sort of subtly show, but, but isn't always ending in death. So a lot of the Thanes sort of arriving with each other about what to do they never actually obviously kill each other, but they just sort of argue of what's to be done about Macbeth, for example. There's also, interestingly, good violence and bad violence in this play. So at the beginning of the play, a lot of the violence is actually good. Um, so, you know, MacDonald and the Thane of Cawdor and the Norwegian king, they're all trying to overthrow the rightful king, which is King Duncan. So it's actually, in some sense, good that Macbeth is so violent and Banquo is so violent in killing all of the people that are trying to stand up against King Duncan and protect Scotland, right? So a lot of this, of this first initial violence is actually quite glorified. So for example, in act one, scene two, you've got the captain is speaking to King Duncan and it's actually quite glorified the way that Macbeth, his sword is like smoking because it's so hot from slashing through so many people's bodies and there's just like corpses everywhere and there's just blood everywhere. And like, it's all really celebrated violence at this point because it's, it's I suppose, somewhat righteous violence, right, righteous anger because these people are traitors. The other thing is that all of the violence here is sort of good in the sense that this is before the chain of being has been broken and before the divine right of kings has been defied. So, so it's kind of good violence as in it's violence which is helping to keep Scotland running and keep things functioning the way it should. But then once Macbeth decides to kill Duncan, from that point on, pretty much all of the violence is bad until the very ending, when obviously Malcolm and all of the English soldiers come back to Scotland and they 
kill Macbeth and Macbeth's men. So that again goes back to good violence, trying to remove the bad, remove the corruption and restore the chain of being and restore the divine right of kings. Violence in this play is a catalyst, a catalyst. So what, what a catalyst is, if you can think of it in terms of chemistry, actually, a catalyst speeds up a reaction, right? So a catalyst in English speeds up or brings about a certain reaction or a certain thing that happens within a play or within a text. So violence is the catalyst because, think about it this way, if Macbeth hadn't violently killed all those men to protect Duncan, then Duncan wouldn't have rewarded him to become Thane of Cawdor. If he hadn't become Thane of Cawdor, then he wouldn't have been emboldened to become king. If Lady Macbeth hadn't done the more subtle violence of like manipulating her husband, saying how she wanted to kill the kindness in him and so on, then he wouldn't have then done the actual violence of killing Duncan, which then propels everything else. And I, I could go through every single act of violence, but there's so many in Macbeth being a, a tragic play. Uh, but violence impacts every single major character. There isn't a single character. Maybe it even impacts all the minor characters, I guess. Like it, it literally impacts every character, right? Because as soon as the violence breaks the chain of being, every single person in Scotland suffers. Okay. It causes all of the, it, it causes and solves all of the conflict in the play as well, right? So, you know, Macbeth's violence mostly causes conflict apart from when he's defending Scotland at the beginning. And then Mac Malcolm and Macduff's violence solves a lot of the conflict at the end. So, so that's violence, basically. There's so much of it in here. It's a pretty likely question to come up. So let's look at some of the major quotes. I'll just analyze and talk to you through some of these. I think we've got six or seven or eight or something. Yeah. So first one, Macbeth unseamed him from the nave to the chops and fixed his head upon our, butt our battlements. Act one, scene two. So this is the sergeant or the captain. Different books have different translations of whether it's the sergeant or the captain, but the same guy talking to King Duncan and saying, look, Mal uh, Macbeth literally cut this guy from the nave, which is your belly button, your navel, to the chops, which is, you know, sometimes we still call our face or our cheeks our chops. So it literally cuts him in half. He cuts a sword's length through him. Imagine how gory and brutal that would be to see a man cut in half. And then he takes the man, he takes this guy's head. This is McDonald. He takes McDonald's head. He's cut McDonald's head off and he sticks it on a pike on the battlements as a sign of victory, right? So this is glorified violence. This is good violence, if there is such a thing as good violence, where someone who's a traitor is getting what they deserve. But even at this early stage in the play, we get this sense of just how violent Macbeth is. He is deeply, deeply violent guy. Uh, it will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. This is actually a quote that I don't talk about that often, which is surprising because I talk about all of them so much. But I really like blood will have blood. It's an easy quote to remember for violence. It's this idea that one violent action will lead to another. And that's what I was talking about, how the violence is a catalyst. So think of it this way. Basically, when Macbeth kills Duncan, he puts into action a chain of violence that will happen because it's obviously not going to be enough to just kill the king. Because if, if he hadn't killed Banquo, then he would have had to kill someone else who was saying that, that may, maybe accusing Macbeth of killing Duncan, right? And then there would have been a different battle. So either way, that initial choice would have caused more blood, more violence, right? And then as he goes more insane, as Macbeth gets more used to killing and shedding blood, there's more blood from that as well, because he basically goes from being like, you know, I don't want to kill Duncan, he's a good man, to one of the quotes I haven't put in here, but he talks about how he is wading in blood. And it's just it would be just as tedious to go back now as to keep going. So he gets used to the blood and he just says, you know, that's part of it. I'm fine with just killing more and more people. This is all part of Macbeth's full arc, his growing violence. Uh, I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out. So this is violence from Lady Macbeth. Now this is technically, it's kind of overt violence and subtle violence at the same time, which I know is a bit weird. 
because the imagery is incredibly overt violence. She's talking about killing a baby. She's talking about a baby that is breastfeeding on her and she's going to grab it and smash its head against a wall. That's overt violence. But it's actually subtle violence in the sense that she isn't actually doing this right now. She's saying that she would do it. She's saying that she would do it. But this again just shows the violence in Lady Macbeth's character and how she's willing to enact huge violence uh, to try and take over Scotland and to try and force Macbeth to do the same. The captain says, I'm faint, my gashes cry for help. And Duncan says, thy words become thee as thy wounds. They smack of honor both. Go get him surgeons. Act one, scene two again. Quite a lot of the violence is a lot. There's a lot of violence throughout, but some of the best quotes are act one, scene two. So if you are just looking for one scene to revise violence, I recommend you look at that. But anyway, so this bit's a kind of amazing, really. So the captain or the sergeant, depending on your translation, literally at the end of explaining everything to King Duncan says, I'm, my gashes are crying for help. So he's basically saying, you know, the image is, is that the whole time he's been talking to King Duncan, he's been bleeding heavily, right? So, so this just shows the, the glory of violence, again, the, the bravery of his violence. Like the captain has just been out fighting for his country. He sees the king. He talks to the king and tells the king what's going on, even though he's literally like bleeding deeply from his body. I wouldn't do it personally, I don't think. If I started bleeding, I'd be like, oh, shoot, I need to get to a doctor. Or I need to get somewhere to you know, sort this out. Otherwise, I'm definitely going to die. It's horrifying to think that he was literally like bleeding quite a lot in front of the king throughout all this. So it helps you to just see how deep and dark the violence is. One of the most famous quotes in the entire play, come spirits, unsex me here, fill me from the crown to the toe top full of direst cruelty and make thick my blood. I could spend half an hour just on this and obviously I don't have time to do that, but unsex me here, there's a link to the idea that men were the violent ones and women were soft and, and not violent. Obviously Lady Macbeth goes against that stereotype. Lady Macbeth is arguably the most violent character in the whole play. She's definitely the one that manages to get the violence to happen anyway. She's talking to the spirit. So there's this link between the evil and the supernatural and violence. Absolutely. So you could talk about how evil the witches are and how that evil leads to a lot of violence. And she asks not just to be a little bit violent. She asks, no, to be filled from the crown, which is the top of your head, to the toe, bottom of your feet, full of direst cruelty. Not just cruelty, direst cruelty. This lady wanted to be the most violent thing ever the most violent thing. And so again, it shows this willingness to violence. And maybe there's a link really between ambition and violence there too, right? So the more ambitious a character is, like Lady Macbeth or Macbeth, the more violent they become. Seize upon, this is one of the most upsetting quotes, seize upon Fife, give to the edge of, give the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. Wow. So this is Macbeth, and this is where the violence starts to get even more out of control. So you know at the beginning, he kills Duncan under the cover of darkness. Then in, uh, in Act 2, he also kills Banquo, but it's under the cover of darkness, right? But now in Act 4, he's literally giving orders to Lennox, to one of his thanes, and saying, look, go and kill everyone in Macduff's line. He doesn't try and hide the violence, and he doesn't spare anyone. It's not just, you know, it's bad to kill anyone. Of course it is. But to kill a wife, an innocent wife, and to kill children is like kind of the worst violence, the worst evil you can do, right? The most evil violence you can do. So the fact he has no shame in going and killing women and children, it's just so awful and terrible. The fact he wants to kill anyone, obviously, is awful and terrible. But that is particularly really, really disgusting. So then Seward in act five scene eight says has had he his hurts before ross says i on the front and then seward says why then he's god's soldier or why then god's soldier be he so i've explained this to a few of my students i think this is a really good quote for violence and it's a really good quote for good versus evil so seward is actually saying here about his son right so there's seward's senior who is this guy and seward junior or young seward who has died macbeth killed him and seward says did my son have his, his stab wounds or his, his hurt on his front, on the before side? And Ross says, yes. And Seward is happy about this. 
And I always ask my I always ask my students, why would the dad care whether his son was stabbed in the front or stabbed in the back? And the answer is obviously, if he was stabbed in the front, it means that he faced his enemies. Yeah. Whereas if he was stabbed in the back, it suggests that perhaps he was trying to run away and be a coward from his enemies. So this again glorifies violence, but it also sort of links violence and bravery. The idea that his son is only very young. I think his son's probably like 15 or 16, right? And yet he's gone into battle, he's fought bravely. And yes, it's there's the violence of the fact that he tried to kill and ended up being killed by Macbeth. But there's this glorification of how this violence will start to solve the issues that, that Macbeth has caused. Okay, good. So those are some quotes on violence. Hopefully that was helpful. What we're going to do now is we're going to go through and do a model paragraph together on violence and think about how we would write about it. So as always, we want to focus particularly in on these assessment objectives may not be the same for you exactly, depending on your exam board, but these ideas will all be there for you. So we want good points, good knowledge of the text, analysis of, of quotes, I should have put up quotes, good analysis of quotes and references, breaking down language and structure within the quotes and references you choose, good context, solid context, and thinking about how the reader res would respond or how the audience would respond. So that's what we're doing here. So how is violence presented in the book? Violence is presented as one of the major themes and catalysts within the book. Technically, if you're typing it, you should put the title in italics. So violence is presented as one of the major themes and catalysts within Macbeth. Uh, one of the ways that we see this is through the quote, which quote shall we do? He unseamed him from the nave to the chops. This gory and violent imagery begins the violence of the play and is also a glorified form or glorified, sorry, form of uh, violence since at this point, uh, at this point, Macbeth is fighting to protect the king and protect Scotland. The fact that Macbeth is willing to commit such a grievous act of violence as cutting a man in half does suggest he has very violent tendencies though. Uh, I'm just going to add references as well in Act 1, Scene 2. And then at the end, uh, uh, however, uh, or oh, oh, sorry, this is confirmed in, uh, I think it was Act 4, Scene 1. Where is it? Yeah. In Act 4, Scene 1. Quote, seize upon five, give to the edge of the sword, his wife, his babes, and all unfor- uh, I'll just leave it there, his wife, his babes. Since Macbeth's violence now has devolved to a point that he is willing to kill innocent people violently, in broad daylight. As a, um, the use of the, the imagery of his babes is particularly disturbing since Macbeth shows no remorse in killing children. This would be, so we've done our Point, we've done our analysis, now we're moving into the context and the reader response. So this would be particularly, dis or this would be extremely disturbing, 
for a Jacobean audience uh, since the idea of a bloodthirsty king would have reinforced to them the idea of a broken chain of being and a king that did not have the divine right to be on the throne. This also links to some of the violence which was happening since James the first had to have Guy Fawkes executed brutally um, to stop people from trying to kill him. And if you want to know how Guy Fawkes died, it is a really bad story. You can look it up how Guy Fawkes was executed. It's something called hanged, drawn and quartered. So there's a model paragraph of violence for you. We've gone through some key quotes as well. I hope that was helpful. So um, I will hopefully see you in the next video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, please do leave them down below. And yeah, thank you very much.